Welcome to the Trimble Business Center Utilities title. In this title, we will demonstrate and show how to use the utility modeling module in functionality within Trimble Business Center. We're going to start with a general overview of the user interface, and then we'll go into a deeper discussion about how to use the utilities and the trenching functionality. Let's start with a general overview. You'll notice on the utilities tab that the ribbon is set up to work basically left to right. So you're going to import your data, you're going to create your data, and then you're going to export your data. On the import tab, you can import in any PDF, vector based, raster based, DWG files, DGN files, LAN XML files, basically any data you need to start laying out your utility network. However, before you do that, you want to start with the Material Site Improvement Manager. In here is where you're going to find your utility parts. You can organize this any way you wish. I've got mine set up as sanitary sewer, storm drainage, and water services. Those are just a few that I'm starting with. When you define the category, you'll start with a utility uh, category up top. That will define that you're creating a site improvement or a utilities category. And you can see that by the icon. Once you're inside of that category, you can go in and start defining and laying out your structures. You'll see that these structures can be utility uh, type of gravity pressure cable. You'll put in the parameters and other information associated with that part. You can see that I have different types of structures for sanitary. I got my manholes as well as my pipes all grouped under this category. Again, you can organize these in many different ways. We'll come back and show you how to do this in greater detail later. And we'll also provide you with a temporary or a uh, template which has already started with some additional or some in initial uh, parts and pieces uh, for the utility functionality. Once you have that, you can then go over and start creating your networks and pipes. You also notice there is a way to edit a user defined shape. So you'll also be able to create a user defined shape and apply that to a part. The first step that you'll do then after you have your materials set up, you have your data in, you're ready to start laying out your utilities is you'll create a utility network. You'll notice over here I've got a couple utility networks. I've got a sanitary and I've got a storm. And you're, I'm showing you this through the Project Explorer. So as you create these parts, they'll show up over here. Under sanitary, once you create that network, you'll then create a run. So each network, a network is a combination of runs, basically. So you can see here that I have a sanitary run, and that's one continuous run. And then this run would be a second run. And maybe this run would be the third run. So you've got basically in this particular utility sanitary network, I've got three different runs. Once you start creating the run, then you create your parts. If you have an existing line string, you can use this command to convert that line string into a utility network line and it will place wherever the lines are it'll place a node this option here is to create the nodes first and then you can use this to create the pipes between the nodes if you look over here when I select on a part in the project explorer it will highlight that part in my plan view so I can see these are my uh, utility runs and then also the nodes are broken out separately as well. So you've got a couple different categories for utilities and the run. The run itself is what actually contains the pipes, the trench template, as well as the trench surface after you create that. These commands here is for editing the utilities. Um, obviously looking at the properties. So if I was to select a part, go to properties, I could see the properties, the name, description, um, whether it's an existing part, uh, other information, the starting node information, and the ending node information, and then some basic geometry information as well. And anything that is selectable and not grayed out, you can modify and edit accordingly. You can insert a node within an existing utility run. You can edit the utility run, reverse it if you've got it going in the wrong direction. And that's pretty much it on the utilities. And then as far as 
once you have the information the utilities laid out you then have your trenching functionality so to do the trenching you have to start in the trench template manager and define a trench template in this template manager you would create a new one you can copy the exist an existing one you can rename it you can delete them this is just a preview of what you're going to see so down here you can select a particular site improvement and basically build your part or your trench using that as an as in a guide as a guide or an example um, so depending on what part you pick if I, you can just see that if i'm using an eight inch uh, water structure dip or i'm using an rcp class three it just shows you the part within the preview on the basic tab you're going to set up the basic function of the trench basic parameters um, a lot of these preview heights is just what you're seeing here. So if I was to change this to three, you'll see that it changes the preview. Doesn't necessarily mean that that is that you're going to have a four foot trench, but it just gives you a preview to show where to put uh, how your trench is going to look. You can choose how it's uh, created um, inside, outside, bunch of different parameters. Again, we'll come back and discuss this in deeper detail later. The backfill tab is how you set up your backfill information, adding in your materials. Side slopes is how you would tie it out to an existing surface or any surface. And then the depth zone is where you can set up and add in depths and cost per depth. So you could come in here and say that from zero to three, my unit cost is let's say you know $100. And then I can create another one where you know that unit cost may be two hundred dollars because I'm getting deeper. All right, so you can set those up and then you'll be able to display that in the uh, in your project. Once you have a template set up, you then insert that te trench template along a, a, a network or a run. Um, actually, you're going to insert the trench. You're going to build the trench along the run is what you're doing. So this you can see here this trench here is along my utility run one. If I was to add it to utility run two, I can insert that same trench template to utility run two, tell it where to start, pick the template, tell it to adjust at the nodes and click apply to that and you'll see that it creates that trench along that run two. And then you'll just simply create the trench surface and now I've got a surface for that particular run. Once you have all that information laid out, you'll run your utility report. And you can also label the utilities using the label style manager. Once you create everything, then you simply export it out, whether you want to export it out as a CAD file or export it out to SCS 900 SiteWorks, uh, you can do that through the export functionality. You can also export out your utilities um, using the field data tab and creating your job site and your design and publishing your data that way as well. And it will go out without having to do anything to the parts. It will export out to SCS 900 um, and provide you with the surface and the points for the structures and line work for the pipes. So you'll have all that information available to you out in the field. So that's a quick overview. What we'll do next is we'll start getting into more of the details and show you actually how to put this all together and start laying out some utilities.